Hello procrastinators, on May the 4th it's going to be Free Comic Book Day and so to celebrate free comic books I decided to give you my views on comic books. As a dyslexic I really love the fact that I don't have to read all of the description and the action that's going on, I can see it right there in glorious artwork. I like the fact that they're much cheaper to make so they can cater to those niche markets that otherwise just wouldn't be able to fund themselves to explore their ideas in a fantasy or sci-fi world. And comics have never been as good as they are right now, the artwork's better, the writing's better, I really do think that we're in a, a real high point for the comic book industry and if this is a medium that you haven't tried before I thoroughly recommend finding your local comic book store and going down there uh, this weekend to pick up some free comic books to see if this is in fact something that you might like. But the problem is, as contradictory as it sounds, I am too geeky for comic books. See, the first thing is, I'm a completionist. I like my stories to have a beginning, a middle, and an end. And comic books just go on and on and on and just never really know when to quit. Uh, comics like, say, Hellblazer, which started the same year I was born, this year has just finished with its 300th issue, and it's just kept going on through there. It's had 10 different core writers. That's not one person's vision. That's just a clusterfuck. Now, regardless of whether or not it's good or bad, I don't like it. And secondly, I'm still a completionist. They really do hate us, you see. The way that they order their structures just really infuriates me. For example, Marvel has a new, an, a new series. It's called All New X-Men. I thought All New X-Men. I was a kind of a fan of X-Men, particularly the movies and the cartoons, but I've always struggled with the comic books because of all of the reasons listed in this video. I thought, it's only got nine issues in, maybe I could go back. So I then did a little bit of research. But it's not all new X-Men, is it, Marvel? This isn't a reboot. This is a rebranding to try and sucker people like me into it because it's actually the uncanny X-Men who have gone through the events of X-Men versus Avengers. And now, if I want to get up to date, I have to read the uncanny X-Men, which is over 500 issues, not including the spin-off specials or one-shots that go together to make that universe. And it's just such a mess of explaining all of these things. I'm just... There's a special level of autistic hell for people who have this sort of organising. Now this practice has not only made me give up on comic book series when it became too much of a mess for me to keep going on, but it also makes it nigh on impossible to enter or re-enter a comic book series. I used to be a big fan of Transformer comics. I kind of fell out, they went for a bit of a boring phase. I thought, I know, I'll find out if they're still doing things. So I had a look at what Transformer comic books were coming out this month. The Transformers pop-up book. From best I can tell, this is either in the movie universe or the Prime universe, and I'm not a fan of either of those, so that was a pass. Transformers Prime Beast Hunters. I'm guessing from the name in this one that this is from the Transformers Prime universe, which as I said before, not something that interests me. Transformers Regeneration 1. Now, as best as I can tell, this is them now continuing on a storyline which was finished, see part one, I liked it when it was finished, but they've decided to carry it on uh, part of the old Marvel comic book series from the 80s. I can't quite work out though if this is a continuation of the UK or the US system. Uh, as the two continuities were actually slightly different because they had different creative teams. Transformers More Than Meets the Eye and Transformers Robots in Disguise. Now both of these are ongoing series with large numbers next to their name, but I'm fairly confident that these two happen to be the continuation of the comic book series that I used to read. I'm not entirely sure why it's split into two parts now. However, you also have to make sure that you don't confuse this because Robots in Disguise is also the name of the Japanese cartoon series in which Optimus Prime uh, turned out to be a fire engine and more than meets the eye was also the name of a Dreamweaver source book where they told you about all of the characters so make sure you don't get them confused. Transformers Monstrosity. I don't know where this belongs. It's so messy. The comic books themselves don't specify which continuity they're in. They don't mess they don't sell you what the timeline is. None of the major comic books have websites which tell you what the big main timelines are. I mean, Star Wars sort of kept to it a little bit in the front of comic books, but even they have a pretty lousy system at being able to map it out, and they're the best! And this is the reason why I can't just walk into a store and pick up a comic book, which is what people want to do when you're selling comic books. You want people just to come in and buy things. But no, I always have to do the research beforehand. But this isn't their biggest crime. No, my friends, that is the comic book crossover. Batman technically isn't a superhero because he doesn't have any superpowers. He has a super wallet and lots of gadgets, which makes him really great for beating up gangsters, but makes him absolutely useless when compared to, say, Superman, who can fly around the world so fast it goes backwards in time. And now that we know that Superman doesn't even have to deal with consequences because of time, well, I mean, 
What's Batman there for? I mean, really, his only purpose for being there is for the Bat Pooper Scooper to pick up all of the kryptonite so that Superman can do his job properly. And they don't even work well together. I mean, Batman can't even be a red shirt or put him in danger because we all love him and it would be too much of a franchise to actually kill off properly. Though, don't get me started on comic books not killing people off properly. Um, but on top of that, you know, they don't even look good because Batman looks at Metropolis I mean, he looks just like, you know, an emo turning up to a Taylor Swift concert. Whereas Superman in Batman looks like the worst of cartoons and some sort of weird pop art where someone couldn't quite be bothered to colour in the background. And the annoying thing is, is it's all canon. Yes, because to, if you want to read the X-Men comics, you also have to read X-Men vs Avengers, which means you need to read the Avengers comics, which means you have, need to read the whole Marvel Universe, which I know is their sort of ploy, but quite frankly it really bugs me, because they're all so isolated. These supervillains turn out to be incredibly loyal to their hero, with a few exceptions of darting around. For the most part, they stick to their right comic, which seems really strange considering that so many of them are based in New York. I mean, Spider-Man very rarely gets to fight Sentinels, but in X-Men they regularly come to take away innocent uh, mutants, and we know that Spider-Man is on the side of the mutants, so why does that not happen more regularly? How comes we don't have situations... In fact, in fact if you're a supervillain, in a Marvel Universe, why are you in New York at all? They've got Spider-Man, Daredevil, the Fantastic Four, um, the Avengers do a significant amount of hanging out there. I'm really just saying, seriously, come to London. We have stuff to steal, we have a, a good structure, and we have nothing, in fact, LA, even if you want to keep it to the States for some reason. It's, there are, there are places where things can happen, you can have fun, you can commit crimes and there aren't any superheroes. Why aren't you doing that? Why isn't Superman looking after Metropolis in the DC universe? He can do it in his spare time. He's as fast as anything, faster than a speeding bullet. He can easily get there, deal with their problems, come back, and that's the same as a cup of tea. Or maybe, in fact, it turns out that Superman just likes everyone suffering. Why are the League of Shadows not going over and picking on Lex Luthor. He seems to be far more corrupt to me than the whole of Gotham. Now I actually kind of like expanded universes. I like it when you get one superhero and then you tell his story is the main storyline and then you get to get the supervillains or the sidekicks or some small events that are happening elsewhere in the world and you get to tell those little stories which help make the main story flow faster and feel like a more complete universe. But the thing is, is, as much as Archie comics are enriched by Betty and Veronica comics being out there as well, if one of them was to suddenly say, get the Witchblade and become the new bearer, it would completely change what sort of comic it is. And it would destroy the universe. And that's why they don't do that. Personally, as a geek, I actually find this really painful to try and deal with all of these situations. And I find it really hurts me. And I still have to hang around every now and then to find those few small gems where someone creates a story which only lasts for 12 issues and then I can wrap it up and say, oh, you were all self-contained and no one else got to touch you and you're a wonderful thing. It really annoys me that we see this as something geared towards the same people who get really obsessed about things and go, hey, you know what they would like? Bad continuity, bad organisation. I don't understand what's going on with this. I really can't understand why people who like comic books don't all just get up in arms and think that this is the worst thing in the world, and I can't understand why the people who write comic books keep doing this. Surely then other people must be getting as annoyed at this as I am. And on that note, Happy free comic book day. Uh, I hope that you find more gems than me or maybe you're some weird person and this stuff doesn't affect you in the same way it affects me. Uh, if so, enjoy yourselves and have lots of fun with comic books and stuff. I'm just going to wait for it all to come out on movies myself.